every week we share a different bit of what we call tribal knowledge. This is things to make you better, make you stronger, make you wiser. And uh, again, to give you as many shortcuts as you can so you can shave decades off of your learning curve. So how many of you guys are familiar with what we call the uh, real estate investor maximum allowable offer formula? How many of you guys are familiar with that formula? Okay. Um, the trouble with that formula is that it works probably most of the time, right? But it doesn't work 100% of the time. And I wanna go over the different times when it doesn't work just to make sure that if you're in a situation where uh, you're looking at a deal, I wanna make sure that you don't overpay on one end of it, and I wanna make sure that you don't underpay on the other end of it. And you may be thinking underpay, well, yeah, I wanna underpay in every situation. Well, the truth is that if you offer uh, too low and you, are do, and, 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 and you are competing against other people, might that result in you not getting that deal? And the answer is yes, probably. So I wanna make sure you guys are aware of the different ways to be able to make sure you're able to make money uh, and not lose deals and make sure and make money even on, on the deals that you do, especially when we're in a situation where uh, it's a lower end deal. So I wanna go through very quickly, again, what we call the maximum allowable offer formula. So MAO stands for maximum allowable offer uh, that's the real estate REI, real estate investor formula. Um, I know some of you guys are very experienced. I know some of you guys are new. So I just wanna uh, go through the different acronyms just so we're on a, all in a level playing field. So typically as a real estate investor, you'll hear us talk about um, making offers at 70% of ARV minus repairs. So let's just kind of walk through what that looks like. So if the ARV is about 400,000, and if your repairs are 100,000, your offer is 400,000 times 70%, that's 280,000, right? Minus the $100,000 in repairs, which means your maximum allowable offer in that case is $180,000. Now, a lot of you guys may understand the formula, but you may not know how much you make at, if you actually use and apply that formula. So I wanna go ahead and tell you what that is as well. So investors typically make somewhere between 10 to 15% of their ARV, which in the case of a $400,000 deal, is gonna be somewhere between 40 and $60,000. Now, this depends on a few things. Uh, so number one, it depends on what your cost of capital is. So in fact, we have two lenders, at least two lenders in the room who want to bring down your cost of capital uh, that are here with us tonight. And uh, what I'll tell you is if you have a very low cost of capital, or let's say, for example, you're investing with an old 401k turned self-directed IRA and you have no cost of capital, or you're investing with your own cash, right? Uh, you'll typically make at least 15% of the ARV. Now, if you are working with a hard money lender, they're gonna take about 5% of the ARV in terms of your profit. Now, uh, some of you guys may be thinking, well, that's a lot, but I wanna make sure you guys all know and the lenders in this room will tell you, don't think of what it costs you, think of what it makes you. So if it unlocks your ability to make uh, $40,000, then you should be very thrilled to share some of that profit with someone who can actually make that 40K magically appear. Uh, now, it also assumes, and this is a big, big assumption here, it assumes that your ARV, your after repair value, is what? Correct, right? And do we sometimes find situations where the ARVs are incorrect? What's one of the biggest examples of the ARV being incorrect that we've noticed lately? Zillow. Zillow. I was hoping that several people would yell stuff out long enough for me to take a drink, but uh, thank you uh, for making that the shortest drink that I've ever had. Um, no, uh, Zillow, right? Zillow, so, so some of you guys, and, and I, you, know, you always know as a real estate investor when you're dealing with someone who's brand new because it, it, it is, it, it, they just shoot up that flag right away, which is, what do they say? They say, well, Zillow says, and then insert incorrect number here, right? That's basically how this works. So even Zillow says, hey, no, we've screwed this up pretty good. In fact, we've lost about $150 million just in one state. Um, so we're getting out of this business because it's not what, as easy as we thought it was, right? So if that is, you know, I, I want that all to be a lesson to you guys. So, so if you ever catch yourself saying, well, Zillow says, just slap yourself across the face because that's what the investor on the other side from you is, is, is wanting to do to you, right? Do, do you, have you guys experienced this, right? Uh, so, so make sure that your ARV is truly correct. How do we do that? What's part of our due diligence? Who do we need on our team? We need an investor-friendly realtor on our team, right? 
um, you will not be successful unless you have an investor-friendly realtor on your team. Now, to be clear, as we were talking earlier with Daniel, that investor-friendly realtor does not have to be you, right? Uh, so, but it just has to be anyone. Um, and I will tell you, and, and can, may, I, may I ask your, your permission to say things the way they are? Yes, um, may I ask your permission to do that even if it's a little uh, over the line a little bit? And okay, can you guys all promise I need like a pledge, like don't cancel me, at least not tonight? <laughs> Is that okay? Seriously, I'm seriously asking this. Okay, so um, Zoom might wanna know how to find a, a potential investor-friendly realtor. Yeah. Um, Probably about one in 10 Uber drivers is a realtor. Yes, yeah, any, I'm curious, any Uber drivers in the room? Everyone quit in March of 2020, huh? Yeah, okay. So, so I cannot tell you how many Ubers I have gotten into and I'm talking to, either, like one time I, I called an Uber out of the Real Estate Investor Association meeting that we had in Houston. And it was right after the meeting, and this car pulls up, and it has a We Buy Houses, you know, uh, uh, like uh, metallic sign on it. And I'm like, oh, that's just one of the investors from the meeting. And I'm like, my Uber should be here by now. <laughs> and I'm looking at my thing, and I'm looking at the car, I'm like, oh, no, no, that can't be. And I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh, it is. So, you know, I get in the car, and it's like, hey, I haven't seen you in a while. But uh, a real estate investor, right, also a realtor. And what does that tell you if they're driving for Uber? Plan A is not working out exactly the way they wanted it to do, okay? So, so, so if you want to find you know, an, an underemployed realtor, right? There are plenty of underemployed realtors. Um, uh, pop on Craigslist, you know, I need a transaction coordinator, right? You're gonna get a bunch of underemployed realtors who will answer. Um, and then uh, uh, just make me a commitment every time you get in an Uber, are you, are you, a, are you a realtor? Ask him, you might find an underemployed realtor, right? Who might be able to do what for you? Make a little money with you, help you in your business and you can help them in yours. So uh, you gotta make sure that ARV is correct. Now, uh, some, 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 and I, I will say, uh, there's um, uh, probably the, the worst kind of advice that you can get is, is, is trusted advice from a bad source. So does, is, is that realtor always gonna be your best advocate even though they're supposed to be a fiduciary to you? Not always, right? Not always, because they're, they're gonna get paid, for example, their 3%, whether or not you make money or not, right? So, so I want you guys to be responsible, again, for your due diligence so we don't violate Warren Buffett's number one rule of investing. Now, the other thing that this uh, 10 to 15% profit assumes is that your repairs are correct, okay? Um, so so uh, this, is, this is probably my least favorite quote in real estate investing, but I wanna make sure you guys are all aware of it, and that is, my renovation project came in on time and on budget. Who said that? No said no one ever, right? Said no one ever, so that assumes your repairs are correct and assumes your t time frame is about six months, right? Uh, so that's where that making somewhere between 10 to 15% of your ARV comes in if you use that maximum allowable offer formula. Now, um, the 70% formula works great when the house is in a certain range. Okay, what does that mean? Well, for a lower end house, for example, a $100,000 house, a $60,000 house, a $150,000 house, that 70% of ARV doesn't work as well. Okay, that doesn't work as well, and I'll go through and I'll kind of explain why. Um, and I will say on the, on the flip side of that, um, um, you know, uh, again, it works, but it's not as effective when the property is priced over $500,000, right? So 70% so of ARV uh, minus repairs fails a little on those lower end properties. 70% of ARV fails a little on some of these higher end properties, and I'll, and I'll kind of explain why. Um, so on those lower end properties, uh, why it doesn't work is because when you're using that formula, you're expecting a certain margin percentage, right? Um, but when you are doing a lower end property, that margin percentage converts to really small margin dollars, right? So let's say on a $100,000 house, that's somewhere between 10 to 15%, I'm sorry, between 10 to $15,000. Now, what comes up uh, from time to time is uh, that uh, sometimes you run into problems, right? Surprises, right? Sometimes you run into my least favorite quote uh, that real estate investors hit, which is my renovation project came in on time and on budget, said no one ever. 
So when an issue comes up and it's a five, 10, or $15,000 surprise, which could be something as simple as a new air conditioning system, right? Especially with where costs have gone right now, um, might that slash your profit in half, right? What if you said, I thought the roof would get by, but it didn't get by? What if there was a surprise repair that your buyer's inspector caught, right? So what does that look like? Uh, the, what does that, how does that show up for you? It looks like you're you know, learning to know what it feels like to work at the Walmart you know, in terms of wage, except without the benefits or the air conditioning system, right? Uh, so on the lower end offers, um, uh, many people will typically offer less than that 70% of ARV minus repairs formula because they know sometimes those issues come up. Um, even if you say, say to the buyer, you're selling it as is, where is, how is, right? It's, it's, it's very typical. Now, um, on the higher end houses, when you're looking, for example, at a $500,000 house, the margins typically somewhere between, or the margin dollars, your profits, typically between fifty to $75,000. So even if a five or 10 or $15,000 surprise comes up, right? You have to replace the air conditioning system. You have to put a new roof on the house. You're still making a boatload of money, right? You're still making a boatload of money. So on higher end houses, you'll typically, or you can, somebody's giving me this look like, oh no, I'm not. <laughs> but you can offer more than that 70% of ARV minus repairs formula. Um, because here's the issue. Um, if you don't, and if there's competition, that competition, some of, the comp some of your competition may be using that formula. Some of your competition may just be backing out, hey, I don't wanna do any deal unless I get a minimum dollar amount return because they look at it as a return on their time, not necessarily a return on their investment. And those margin dollars are, are much bigger. So you have to understand if you have uh, competition. Now, I will say just like with everything else, there is an exception here, right? Uh, and that's factoring in for holding time and holding cost uh, because those do add up. And what I've found is in a typical market, and I'm not saying we are in a typical market right now, but in a typical market when you're selling a million dollar home, those holding uh, times and for example, just kind of going back in the time machine, uh, 10 years, uh, the months of inventory for a million dollar home shot up to about nine months of inventory. Now, right now, in many of the markets throughout Texas, we're somewhere between you know, a month, a month and a half of inventory. Uh, in Austin, specifically, we're not even a half month of inventory here, uh, so it's different. But um, it, I, I, I feel it's important in terms of my job in serving you guys is to not just show you how to invest in this market, but also how to make sure you stay unemployable, right? And not have to update your resume in any market, in any part of the market cycle. And is, is, is the market cycle going to shift at some point? And the answer is, oh yes, absolutely. Uh, so it's just something to think about as you're going through that. So, you know, again, just thinking about, um, you know, a typical distribution curve. Um, on these lower end houses, you're going, to, you're going to probably adjust your formula. On the lower end houses, you might be somewhere between 60 and 70% of your ARV minus repairs, right? And on the higher end houses, you might go somewhere between 70 and 80% of ARV minus repairs. Again, um, uh, uh, based on where we are in the market, right? And also based on whether or not you think you have competition on that. And also based on your cost of capital and also based on your knowledge, like did you really nail this ARV, right? So you gotta double check your math. And it's not, it's not the math part of it, but it is, it's the inputs, right? Because garbage in, garbage in, garbage stays in. Garbage makes little garbage babies, right? And those garbage babies take money out of your pockets. So, so, so please um, don't don't just do the math and don't just assume the person who's you know bringing you the deal is bringing you the right number. You've got to trust but verify in every situation. So uh, that is uh, uh, our maximum allowable offer uh, formula. Again, uh, tip of the week. So that's again why some investors will back out their minimum profit and then offer from there. So uh, one of the slides that I showed as we were getting started earlier tonight was I broke out all of the different costs. So you have uh, uh, closing costs on the buy, you have holding costs all the way through, right? And here in Texas, it's uh, our property taxes are pretty high, right? 
And if you're working with a, a lender, right, you're going to be paying holding costs. Uh, you're going to be paying utilities. You're going to be paying insurance. And then when you go to sell the house again, guess what? You get to pay title insurance again. You might need to buy a new survey. You might have to pay realtors. You might have to pay some buyer's closing costs. You might have to pay, buyer, um, uh, pay for additional repairs that the buyer is requiring you to make, right? So those are some of the things that you need to consider. So uh, always compensate for project risk, market risk, holding time, as well as competition. So one of the things that we like to share as part of Texas RIA is and how we can help you guys uh, with different tips of the week, right, is to make sure that you're associated with people who, who understand not just um, uh, the best thing that can happen in real estate investing, but also some of the worst things that can happen. So one of our coaches taught us a very long time ago that in, in addition to looking at best case, we always need to look at worst case and we always need to look at most likely case. What I've found is most of the new investors who, who come in are, are so excited that some of that excitement floods out the worst case and floods out even the most likely case. So all they're betting on is that best case scenario. So I, will, I, um, I would play an, uh, a voice message that I got uh, yesterday from someone. And um, it was a gentleman who called to tell me and it was, it was, it was a lender. And he said, hey, I've got an investor He's got four houses going. And what's happened on those four houses? Short of cash flow. He did not forecast his cash, right? His cash needs. So he's got four houses that are how much completed? Something less than 100, which makes it what? Hard to sell. So what is this investor calling me to, this, this, this lender calling me to do? Hey, I know you buy houses. Hey, we got this guy in a little bit of trouble. Would you, would you, you know, could you figure out how to bail him out here? And by the way, pay me a little fee along the way, which I'd be happy to. Uh, but uh, that happens all the time, right? So sometimes you, you, you get, um, you're not forecasting your cash flows. Sometimes you're not forecasting that that uh, stove that you ordered uh, last month is, is, is on the literal slow boat from wherever it's coming from, right, uh, to get here. And sometimes you're not forecasting, especially in the city of Austin. Um, who is not your friend in the city of Austin? That would be the city of Austin, uh, the permitting division, okay? I don't know if anyone's ever built a per pull, tried to pull a permit here, but it's like, it's like, it's like, um, yeah, it's probably one of the most, this is, uh, of all the cities that I invest in, this is probably the most difficult when it comes to permitting. So. Um, we're here to share that travel knowledge with you, not to scare you away, but just again to make sure that you go in knowing what um, knowing what it's like. So, so, so I, I, I want us to again shave decades off. I don't want the market. I don't want the city of Austin. I don't want your repair budget to come out and punch you in the face when you're halfway through the project and then you need a bailout, right? Uh, so what I find too is a lot of investors are not getting the right knowledge because they're learning from out of state people. Uh, they're, at, they're at university, YouTube, YouTube University, right? Yeah. Um, and the problem with YouTube University is you don't know who you're learning from, where they live, and if the strategies that they're teaching you are even legal in Texas or even a thing in Texas, right? Uh, so we try to uh, clear, the, clear the smoke there, right? And not just give you the ingredients, also give you the formula. Uh, but we'd love to be able to assist you on your path as real estate investors so that you can do it uh, uh, much more effortlessly, much, much more joyously, and making a lot more money along the way. So that's part of the tip of the week. So thank you guys for joining us for that.